Hello, Guilders, and welcome into Dungeon of the Mad Mage, Episode 12, Shocking Discoveries. I'm Timber the Wizard, and my pronouns are he, him, and I'm your humble dungeon master uh, tonight. Uh, we're gonna, it's going to be a fun game, and we're going to dive right on into it. But before we do so, I want to say uh, this Wednesday, we are having a special uh, Battle Royale Level 20 one-shot kind of vibe starring me, Werewolf, uh, Druid, Rights Q, Domino. It's going to be a wild ride, and who knows who will come out on top. It's going to be it's going to be a fun time that happens on Wednesday at 7 p.m. EST. Don't miss it. Um, so we're going to be uh, diving right into the game tonight. Uh, but before we do so, I'm going to have my lovely players introduce themselves. Uh, Goldmoon, why don't you take us away? Hi, I'm Goldmoon. She, her pronouns. And I'll be playing Gabloidus. He, him pronouns. Gabloidus is a soil sucker goblin. That means he lives in the sewers and he has a pet cranium rat as his buddy. <laughs> Beautiful. Excellent. Uh, next we have uh, the Seshcast. Hi, I'm the Seshcast. I'll be playing Hex Starchild. Uh, Hex Starchild has just found out that he is the apparent throne of Geneva. And with his friends in tow, he must navigate his new life of royalty. And see if he can be the princess that everyone thinks he can be. Incredible. That's that's Princess Diaries, right? That's Princess, <laughs> that's Princess well, Diaries. <laughs> it's Texas Diaries right now. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh uh, next we have Mish. Uh, yes, I am Mishroom Sue. Uh, I'm playing Melchio, who is here to... Um... I'm blanking. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about baked goods. <laughs> we were talking about baked goods. Or <laughs> no, my, brain, my brain is just stuck. Just like, damn, a peach cobbler sounds good right now. Anyway, I gotta get out. I gotta get out of. I gotta get out of baked goods. I gotta get back into dairy. <laughs> I gotta get. I gotta get back into dairy. Well, they go well together. Um, but I am playing Melchio. Uh, he is here to keep you alive if you behave, and will let you go to your god if otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And last up, but certainly not least, we have Werewolf. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Werewolf BF. I use they, them pronouns, and I am playing Henrietta Alumax. Uh, she, her. And Henrietta is here to help make sure that Melchior doesn't go insane and kill everyone. That's God, fair and valid. Thank God somebody is. All right, excellent. <laughs> 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 when we last left the party, um, they had been kind of... Forced into a section of the dungeon against their will by unfortunate circumstances, they had come across some rust monsters and fearing for their robotic companion's life, uh, they fled, uh, locking themselves in. Um, in doing so, they encountered several gibbering mouthers and a few nothics, very strange uh, warped aberrant creatures, um, as well as their old friend Halith, who, uh, while battered and bruised, was still moving about and continued his assault on his uh, and his vengeance out against those who wronged him. Uh, Rex the Hammer fell under his blows, and in doing so, Halith disintegrated into dust and a puff of brimstone. Um, when we last left the party, they were all standing around, uh, the, the heavy smell of sulfur and brimstone still hanging in the air. So I guess that's one last... I'll say it, monster, to worry about here in the dungeon. He, he wasn't a... He wasn't a monster. He... Oh, undoubtedly was. Hey, was just what's like what's like going on over here? Struggling with this. Just <laughs> looking at the... Looking at the... Um, just a pile of ash and brimstone and how um Halith had left them just like well like he tried like they there's just this look of absolute devastation and even as pell as Melchiel is he's just even more so just like somehow not like as if he d hadn't seen this conclusion coming Melchiel have you like moved forward to to the the pile of dust that is that was once Halith. Yeah. Like, especially whenever he was crumbling, Melchior would have tried to go and catch him and be like, okay, well, hey, hey, we can, 
you do body. You just, you, you know, you, you get into or, you know, just kind of like we can fix this, that type of. Oh, yeah. I, of I think Melchior was probably like mid run to Halith as he just began to disintegrate in yeah. front of you. And he just crumbled as you reached him. Uh, Melchior, go ahead and make me either a perception check or a religion check as you move up to Halith's, Halith's dust. <laughs> Bones, yeah. Um, uh, 22 perception. Damn. You are, as you say, you are like, you don't know how to process this. Your eyes are moving back and forth across the pile of dust that used to be, used to be Halleth. You, you're unfocused and, and, and unable to process this when your eyes catch on something in the dust uh there is a flicker of light a gleam that you see uh, mel is gonna go ahead and approach the dust pile just kind of carefully sifting through it to, to get to that you gently dig your hand into the ash and your fingers close around a coin. He uh, he pulls the coin out and just kind of like cleans it up a little bit. As you do so, you see that it is a gold piece and it appears to be almost like a religious icon on the... It, it has the symbols of Joaquin emblazoned into both sides, and it seems to be almost like a religious focus. Mel nods to himself and is just like, I'm, I'm gonna get you out of here. And he's going to tuck that coin away. Now make a religion check for me. Oh, okay. Uh... Oh, okay. 20, dirty 20. Dirty 20. You feel, as you put the po the coin into your bag, into your pocket, as you release it from your grasp, you feel, just for like the briefest moment, like you feel like it glowed, or not glowed, it, 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 it felt like warm as you as you let it go. Just like this momentary moment of warmth as as you release it, as as you say this. Okay. Mel is just gonna fall quiet and try to recenter himself. Like there's a aside from the obvious, there's a, a another heavier reason for him to get out of here. Could I do an inside check on Mel? No, I think <laughs> not. <laughs> As a matter of fact, yeah, I'm gonna say go for it, uh, uh, you Are you are you trying to hide this? He's prideful. Yeah, I think so. Okay, go ahead and make a deception check then. Oh boy, he's a wet paper napkin. <laughs> and a nine deception. <laughs> and a fifteen. All right, with the 15, what does Henrietta see in, in Melkiel in this moment? Henrietta can see, even though Mel's back is to them, is tied kind of like to everybody in this moment. There's just kind of like the slight downward twitch of ears and like <laughs> with a nine. There's like a small trail of snot. Oh no! Going um, over like a, it's like a quivering lip, just silently weeping. I think that um, Henrietta sees that, and there's just like a small sort of uh, pneumatic pop as she pops her knuckles, and she'll say, "I think it's time for a bit of a a, a little rest, don't you think? Maybe a little break." I'm certain there's uh, enough bodies uh, from these, whatever these one-eyed monsters are, you could find something to do, Gabloidus and Hex, yeah? I mean, huh? I, I'd rest. I'd be resting. I got really hurt. Rest? Yeah, I, I'm tired. Can I get one of those 
like sleeping bags we saw earlier. Where is that? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, uh, so it sounds like y'all want to hunker down and take like maybe a short rest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is something that I kind of want. I It's still very much resting, but it's just like I would love to help kind of um, center or try to help center Mel uh, during short rest, if that's okay. Yeah, I think that that's absolutely like... Um, because you can, have, I think you can have like conversation. You can talk yeah. during a short rest. You just can't do anything yeah. strenuous. Absolutely cool. Um, and I do think I probably will get some hit dice back. Um, yeah, everybody can feel free to roll hit dice during this. You'll get all your stuff that you get back on a short rest. What does it look like as um, during this like hour or so? Henrietta is like, um, you know, kind of trying to soothe Melchior. Um, I think seeing Mel is upset, um, Edda will come over and say, Mel, uh, would you join me over here in the corner? He just kind of, like, fixes his face. And, God, he, this sucks so bad. This sucks <laughs> so bad for him. Yeah. Um, he has zero percent melanin, so he's just red. <laughs> 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 um Edda will kind of bring you over in this corner and she'll say you know I it's very easy to kind of get caught up here in your brain and she'll kind of like put her hand on your forehead and she'll say let's let's bring it into your body a little bit and we'll we'll help um help you breathe and um if Mel would be open to it. Etta would like to show um, him how she does her meditation. Yeah, absolutely. He, I think just kind of in that moment, it's just kind of like the little shaky sniffling, fixing their face. Just like, yeah, yeah. Let's, um, something else to focus on. Etta, uh, her sort of monk martial arts looks very much like kind of real world Bagua Zhang. You know, when she's not doing all the flips and tricks and stuff, it's much more like a slow metered kind of circular walking. Mm -hmm. And she'll show you like how to like kind of position your hands and begin to start to walk in a circle. And then um, Brie will kind of slither down her arm and onto the floor. And it will say, just follow Brie, uh, focus on her, and we'll just be doing a bit of a, a walk in a circle and just focusing on the next step ahead of us. Um, moments like this, moments of intense emotion, um, it can be really easy to get caught up in that, but something we can do to kind of help alleviate that a little bit is just focus on the next step and... When you meditate like this, it becomes quite literal. And so um, Bree starts kind of tracing this circle on the floor. It's maybe like 10 foot in a diameter that you can kind of follow her as she... And Edo will be doing a similar circle like next to you. And it's just kind of like... It's just, it's all about just, you know, breathing. Okay, yeah. And he'll, he'll do this with her and just like... Follow Bree each step, just measuring his breathing and just calming down little by little over this time. Hex is playing the the Cheers theme song. The <laughs> <laughs> um, and kind of quietly while we're walking, Edda will say, um, I didn't mean to snoo, but it does seem that you are creating a little collection of holy symbols over there. He just kind of snorts. Uh, yes, well. First that dwarf that we found that had been betrayed, and now Halith also betrayed. It's almost as if there's a running theme. <laughs> well, 
I mean, you know, if it makes you feel any better, I think you could kick all three of our asses if it came to it. Okay, now he guffaws fully. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you don't have you don't you don't have to flatter that hard. I, I, as I appreciate all of this, but <laughs> we we all know how how far that would that would not go very far. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I think we just spend a nice little moment, kind of, we have that little laugh, and just do some circular walking. Yeah. Where everybody knows your name. <laughs> <laughs> that's your song of rest is the cheers yeah, that's, theme. That's, 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 that's the song of rest. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I might spend more more hit die, because I'm not totally at full, so I think I might just... Do yeah, it, go for it. Do it. Oh, so I would also say, say, don't let me heal, but I can... from the way my spell slots look, oh baby. Yeah. I would also say, what was that tempo? I, would, I was also going to say, Rex the Hammer, he did have a pack with him as well. Ooh, can I go snoop in the pack? Yeah, we'll say that over over the course of the um, the hour or so, you guys look through the pack. There is, um, he has in it one silver short sword, uh, some rope, 30 foot, and two days of rations, a flask of oil, uh, a pouch with 13 gold, and a potion of healing. I want the oil. That's all I want. You guys can add up the rest. Oil? Don't say oil! Abloidus... It's a long pause. <laughs> Abloidus jumps out of the minecart he's been sleeping in. Um, I wouldn't mind a potion of healing if you have one over there. Ooh, also arcane recovery while we're doing a short rest so I can get a spell slot back. What else is in this bag? Is that a silvered sword? Ooh. There's a silvered sword. We got some money. We got... No, God bless. There's no more oil. There's no more oil here. It's all gone. It's um, all, all gone. If it's okay, I can hold on to the potions of healing if that's okay with people. Yeah, you can have it. Yeah. Cool. I'm the most mobile, so I can. If someone goes down, I can go administer. What else we got idea. here? Any animal flakes? Let me let me look. <laughs> uh, go ahead and you make a know. perception check for animal flakes. Animal <laughs> Anybody flakes. who wants to. <laughs> Just makes me think of Glorbo executive powder. Oh my god! <laughs> the two people looking can't find any. Good. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the uh, well, there aren't very many animals down here other than other than some rats, and you do find rat droppings for sure. Um, the Nothics do leave uh, some nice flakes for sure, as you as you're kind of like. Like looking around, the mesoloth in the middle, which was like this demonic looking thing, just turned to goo as uh, as it was destroyed by Halith. How were the eyeballs? Yeah, I was about to ask the same thing. Of the Nothics? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, How many of them are still in good condition? Go ahead. Uh, go ahead and make me uh, an Arcana check for each of the Nothics. If some if somebody wants to get the hell back, and you can do it at advantage. I have a plus four to Arcana. If you wanted to help, yeah. Yeah, I'll okay. help you. So that's three Nothics? Or uh, two Nothics. Is it the two? Okay, I wasn't sure about because they're the ones on the floor. Uh, so two. Yeah, boys just immediately <laughs> scoops up the flakes. Oh, flakes! Wow. <laughs> um, so the highest was a 16. The other was a 9. A sixteen? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say uh, you get one of the one of the Nothic eyes. It's kind of got this uh, curious property to it that's like the uh, it, it looks kind of deeper than it should. Interesting. Okay. And I will um, suppose I will hand this eye off to um, Hex. That'll go in the disembodied body uh, bag. Do you have some sort of jar? I just feel like eggs, you know, it's kind of like a, a sort of sack it'll of be, sword. It'll pop. It'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, it'll be fine in the disembodied. All the other disembodied parts will make a okay. little nest egg for it. For sure. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm sure that will end well for you. It's better than the bone bag. Sure. It will definitely pop if it goes in the bone bag. <laughs> All right, I think that's I think that's about it. I think that's everything that I said was in here. Let me just double check. And 13 GP. Perfect. Uh but yeah, uh pockets filled with uh looted goods and uh, wounds at least partially knit close and and also animal flakes can't forget about those um y'all y'all get up and and start to head out so what's what's the plan at this point i think y'all have done like a complete little circuit of this area uh and the only way out so far that y'all have discovered other than the rust monsters is that vent uh god bless also take the 13 gp all right i'm thinking vent sus yeah, okay. I, 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 I do. I Where's get the small. <laughs> Is I don't know if there's an item. I might have to make an item for the silver short sword, but I do want to take that just in case we run Maybe. into werewolves. Yeah, or something. Or any, yeah, anything that doesn't like regular weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's climb up that slide we saw. Okay. Uh, Henrietta, you took the Nothic guy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I believe that Hex has the Nothic. Hex I mean, I took it out of the body, but... Uh... Hex, you have the Nothic guy. Yeah, I have it. I have the eyeball. That's what the Nothic guy does. Oh. What does it do? I just sent it to, 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 to Hex. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, nice. Do you have to eat it to do it? No. You have no. to replace one of your eyes to, with it to do it? I mean, there's also... No. I mean, you can eat it. There's nothing preventing you <laughs> from eating it. There might not be a magical effect associated with it, but nothing <laughs> is preventing you as well. Just, just you it's know... Nothing's precluding you okay. from eating it, is all I'm going to say. Anyways. Uh, sure. That is true. Okay. All right. Nice. So y'all head back to the vet. Yes. Yeah. To the vent, to the vent, to the vent, to the vent. Right. <laughs> like, wait, wait, the vent? It's up at the, it's past the it's all the way up spiral. Here. And okay. Yeah. I forgot you can ping Christ alive. <laughs> That's more helpful. <laughs> oh, that's right. The vent. Yes, I'm here. I've, I'm, I'm on the same page now. I forgot this was here. Would you like me to move you as well, Hex? Ah, uh, yes, please. You got it. I think the camera is centered. Okay, great. Yes. So you see, there is a vent. It is about twenty, thirty feet up into. Uh, yeah, it's about twenty feet up into the ceiling where the kind of uh, as the ceiling kind of goes by. Um, you see it. It's kind of hanging down. Gobloidus had managed to climb up before, um, and he's just he's just up there already. He's climbed up. He's climbed up. Uh, <laughs> Gobloidus, you're in the vent. You um you look around the corner and you see out into a very curious kind of area. They definitely you're you're kind of crawling uphill a little bit as you're doing so and you see that it kind of as you it, it kind of at, terminates at like a closed hatch what do you do uh yeah blue is going to first just try pushing on the hatch yeah the hatch um it it's like obviously being held down by gravity but there's nothing like it's not locked or anything and you can open it if you wish Yeah, he's going to um, peek out first. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, make me a stealth check as you peek out. Um, what you see is the... the um, uh, the, <laughs> the trap door opens into a room. Uh, you see that there are... Um, You see that there is like a kind of metallic looking floor that is kind of shining in the low light. There are also uh, like funny looking tables set up to and throw. 
uh, to and fro there uh, in a couple of different spaces. Um, make me as well. Just make me a straight arcana check. Fourteen on the stealth and eight arcana. Uh, Goblitis, you don't know what the hell is going on in this room, but it looks magical to you. Definitely. Uh, okay. This looks empty, but magical. I'm going to pop out. Okay. Um, I will say as well, before you pop out, Goblitis, uh, you can lower a rope to your friends. That would make it easier for them. You were able to get up because of your small diminutive form uh, and roguish nature, but they, they might have a little bit of trouble. Oh. Okay, guys, come on up. All right. I start making my way over. Uh, you need help? Uh, no, I could be small. I could be a little small, small guy. Make myself small. A basic. Nobody's wearing like heavy armor, right? Mm mm. Mm mm. Okay, then I'm not gonna even make you roll to climb this rope. Uh, that's you. You have no problem doing so. Um, no. Y'all get cool. up, kind of squeezing into the um, into the chute, into the tube. Um, uh, so, God Lotus, you pop out. Yeah. He's going to jump onto the table and just, you know, lay down. There's, like, a bunch of, like, beakers and, like, like chemicals and vials and stuff that Gobloidus just, like, arm swipes off the, the table onto the ground with a huge, like, clatter of shattering glass. <laughs> and then he just, like, lays in, like, the chemicals that are kind of mixing on the table and just kind of... I, I saw him like, a chemical angel or something. <laughs> ah, relaxing. Um, now that we're in the room, could I try and make an Arcana check? Absolutely. Yeah. 18. Thank you to Raichku for playing a card. A grand adventure in the next roll of a random PC. Let's go ahead and see who that's going to be. You got an 18 on that um, mm -hmm. Arcana? Excellent. God bless you. You have advantage on your next check, whatever that may be. Nice. Uh, 18, this is a fucking wizard's lab, Henrietta. You recognize that uh, immediately as you uh, as you emerge into this room. You see that there is, like, this is clearly um, you, magical apparatus has, has been set up to to do research. Um, you also Timbo, notice, yeah. Could I do an insight check? Is this a wizard's lab or is this what you would expect a wizard's lab to look like <laughs> yeah absolutely go for it um i'm also going to say with the 18 arcana check you recognize that the ground um it is this orangish looking metal it's uh, definitely copper oh um and you also see that there are two exits to this room there's one to the south and there is one uh to like the west about the midpoint of the room so, um, yeah, yes. Okay, go into the right inside. Uh, okay. Yep. I blow this hops off the table. Oh, ah, this is boring. I just had a short rest. What the hell am I thinking? And he, he wants to um, investigate the room. Okay. So, um, inside four. You think, I mean, this This looks like it definitely is a uh, a lab. Like, uh, not not like mm. a, just a visual mock-up of what a lab would look like. Like, this definitely looks like what somebody would have been doing. Like, like you can see things that are unwashed and have clearly been used for m uh, magical and alchemical experimentation. Uh, you also see that there is, like, there, there's other evidence about that there is, that this is definitely, like, a real magical laboratory. Um, mm. God, boy, it is you're looking around the room and the first thing that you see um even without any form of check you see uh like cozied up on a uh on the other table is a skull huh. that boy just takes the skull okay I need uh, as soon as you touch the skull, God <gasps> you uh oh have, I need God. everybody to roll for initiative as Whoa. as you reach oh, forward. No. 
a little arc of lightning zaps from the thing to your finger coploidus and shocks you and a deep cackling emerges from the yeah. skull as it rises lightning arcing off of it uh and it says who dares enter into my laboratory the laboratory of trenzia uh everybody roll for initiative oh sorry guy <laughs> I was just about to say, what kind of skull is that? I know. Are there jewels in the eyes? <laughs> you know me and my bones. Oh, and Goblotus, you have advantage on this roll, thanks to Raichu. Sweet! Wow. So this is a metal plated skull that like rises up and at, and as it does so like the energy that arcs down from it into the copper ground and you see what had initially appeared to be like a cabinet of some sort it flips around and it's actually a table that is holding a Frankenstein looking individual uh that has been sewn and knitted together on on this table and as the electricity arcs into it it comes to life and begins to move forward and trenzy goes yes my creation is alive alive i love the vibe thank you uh it's amazing we love it here and let's get that combat music going all right Congratulations! Hey, guy! Welcome to life! <laughs> welcome to existence! You will be dispersed from it shortly. I'm sorry your stay was so short. Please take <laughs> a gift bag. Oh, great, we got everybody. So, this is a surprise round. Trenzia floats up, uh, activates the golem, and and the golem flips around and breaks out of its binds. Uh, and that's going to make us the top of the round with Hex. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to shoot the skull. Well... Now I'll shoot the, the newly crafted thing. The flesh Actually, golem? I, I, I was going to attack this flesh golem, but it's over here, right? Oh, no, it's over here. It's over here. Okay. That's what the uh, looks like also. Some... Ooh. Oh, nice. I think it's time for some mischief. An oldie but a goodie. Nice, and you're casting that on the, the Flesh Golem? Yeah, I'm going to cast this on the Flesh Golem. Uh, deck save or be blinded by a bouquet of flowers. Perfect. Deck save, he is not nimble. 15. Oh, just barely fails it. You managed to, just two flowers just bloom out of his eyes. Aha. He's blinded now. I've done all I can do. And that's it for me. All right. Okay. That's going to make it Trenzia's turn. Uh, <laughs> Trenzia. Trenzia is going to float over to the south. Uh, you can take an attack of opportunity if you would like on the skull. If uh, if you'd like Goblotus as it flow. Oh, wait, actually, do I have enough movement? I do. Uh, you can take an attack of opportunity if you'd like, Goblotus, as it moves 40 feet this way. Yes. Goblotus will use his magic rapier and take a strike at the yeah. skull. Absolutely. Go on and roll the hit. That it's going to roll damage. And you Ten. can get your sneak. Uh, perfect. Uh, so 17 points of damage. Very nice. Yeah, you cut like a big piece of the metal uh, plating on on uh, Trenzia just off of her. And you seem like you've done a good bit of damage with that one blow. Yeah! Trenzia will continue cackling and says, No one enters my laboratory and leaves alive. And she is going to cast Lightning Bolt on Hex and uh, Melkiel. 
uh, counterspell? Yeah, you can counterspell this. Uh, counterspell, does it immediately deactivate something if it's third level or lower? Yes. All right, it's a third level spell. Uh, what does it look like as Hex counterspells the lightning bolt? Uh, the same shadowy magic that always comes off of Hex's spells just like kind of strangles the fingers before the lightning shoots off of them. Well, I guess the strangles the like lightning before it can fully be in evocated. Hell yeah. Like you see Terenzia almost like a battery is like pulling the energy up off of uh like off of the ground and into her and, and like summoning this this big bolt of energy which is starting to lance out an arc forward with this shadow magic, the shadow energy leaps off of hex wrapping its way around the uh around the lightning and binding it and and dissipating it into nothing and Trenzia screams in rage as this happens um and hex disappears okay <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye she is going to do one last thing I actually did disappear. Where'd I go? Ah, oh, that's uh, that's actually all she's gonna do. Where did Hex go? Uh, let me let me go and get you wow. get you out again. And you're out of the initiative order. How did that happen? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, God, I can't believe Hex got deleted. Jesus, she's <laughs> more powerful than we ever could have imagined. Trinzia <laughs> turns to the camera wow. and says. I'm removing you from combat. <laughs> what does that mean? It was just a counterspell. A nose bleed starts happening. <laughs> from removing me from combat? What does that mean? <laughs> Amazing. All right. Uh, so Transia growls impotently as her uh, spell is countered. Malcolm. All right. Gonna go ahead, cast. Oh, boy. Yeah, gonna just gonna go ahead and cast Sacred Flame on Trinzia. Oops, I preemptively rolled that. Ignore that. I was trying to read my things. You but yeah, that's all a good. Dex 14. Dex 14. 20, uh, not natural. So Trinzia is just able to, like, it's kind of floating there, kind of in, in strange patterns, and you see it, like, just dart out of the way when you thought it was going to weave instead. Um, okay. and, and it cackles to itself. Anything more? Hmm. No, not yet. All right, awesome. Uh, all right, I see Henrietta and Goblotus. Y'all both rolled the same. Uh, who has the higher dex mod? Goblotus does. All right, all right. We'll have Goblotus go first. Then Goblotus, what do you do? Goblotus is going to trot over to this little fellow and say, "Hey, what's up, fellow?" Uh. Um, my boy just feels kind of sad for this guy, and he gives him some rat turds. You like sprinkle it on his feet or something? Yeah, sprinkle those turds on his feet. Modern day romance. <laughs> he, he looks down at you, and he goes, and he, you see him ready his fist to hit you. Oh, you didn't like that? Well, shoot. Um, okay. Guess I'll poke you with the rapier. Go basically, go ahead and roll that. Hey, Cold Moon. Yeah. Could you be over here? Instead of here? Perfect. Here? Yeah. yeah. That was all. Just curious. We're good. All right, God, Lordis brings out his magic rapier. Well, you know, I try to be friends. Whatever. <laughs> 26 to hit. 26 definitely hits. Go on, real damage. <laughs> 24, very nice. Holy moly. Oh, we. 
Awesome. Anything more for you, Goblotus? Um, yeah, as a bonus, he's just going to disengage and move back a step. Gotcha. All right, great. Henrietta, that's going to make it your turn. I'm going to move up in the sky's face. And um, I am going to... Oh, do I want to be in this guy's face? Is that the right move? I just remembered he is also blinded. Oh, he's blind. And- oh, from the flowers. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, I'm in this guy's face. Um, and my, I'm going to use my fire whip. Um, and go to attack. Hit bonus. This is supposed to have a plus one, but for some reason it only has a, it has the same as my normal weapon. Um, so I'll roll this, but it's got a plus one to hit. Gotcha. And this is against the oh the flesh column, right? Uh, Twelve yeah. hits going to roll, or sorry, thirteen hits going to roll damage. Yeah. Um. So I do the. Regular damage, which is just a monk hit. It's a 1d4 plus 4, so 5 damage. Uh, and then I do a d6 for the fire damage. Ugh, these rolls. One fire damage on this man. Um, and I'm going to do a flurry of blows. So, first attack. As you hit that one single point of fire damage, it just, uh, it's scorching him. You see the uh, the golem roar in fear and rage as this, like, teeny bit of flame licks it. Okay. Um, and uh, so, 14 to hit. That it. And a 23 to hit. Both those, definitely um, and on the second hit, I'm going to extract aspects on it Absolutely. and put that in the thing again. Um, Quick question. Are these flurry of blows attacks, are they magical or not magical? They are unfortunately not magical, but I still, and so I don't know if it has resistance or immunity for non-magical stuff, but for extract aspects, I just have to hit. I don't actually have to do damage, so I don't know if that affects things. Uh, that's not going to affect extract uh, extract aspect. It's just going to affect the damage. Yeah, 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 exactly. Tell me exactly what you learned from the fl- uh, from from this. Uh, I put I popped it into roll twenty. Um, I get um, oh the uh, vulnerabilities, resistances, immunities, and condition immunities. Okay. Uh, it is immune to lightning, poison, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage uh, from non-magical uh, attacks not made with adamantine weapons. Oh, so it doesn't even take that fight from your blows. Cool. Uh, never mind. So neither of my flurry of blows do anything. Neither cool. of the flurry do anything. Um, I did get info, does, though, though, which the is The fire important. does damage. The fire, the whip does Well, damage. my whip is a magical weapon, yeah, so that's fine. But the flurry of blows is my just punches. It's not till later that monk punches become magic. Uh, you also learned that it is immune to the charmed, exhausted, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, and poisoned conditions. Wow. So you learned a bunch of information. Okay. Um, knowing I'll that... I'll in the chat for you, too. Cool, thank you. Knowing that, um, and also knowing that Nathera's mischief is still active, um, I'm going to relay all of those immunities as I'm running away. Um, okay. And I'll come over here. It is going to uh, make a perception check just to see if it can tell what's going on. I do not have the mobile feet, just kidding. <laughs> I thought I did, and I super don't. Um he is going to make a perception have check. To fix that. He is going to do this at disadvantage because, um, because he's blinded. Yeah. Those flowers. They're Nine, just he, everywhere. He cannot tell uh, where you move. He he swings at you and he just is unable to hit. Uh, just cool. missing. He hits the wall and a chunk of it like is bonked out. Just goes scattering okay. across the ground. Cool. 
Um, that is going to make it the Golem's turn. Is he going to... When does the blindness end from Nathair's mischief? Uh, it'll end at the start of my next turn because something new will happen. Okay, he is gonna make another perception check to see if he can spot, if he can, if he can recognize anybody nearby, and to get a disadvantage. He got a two, so he does not know. He he doesn't know what's going on. Um, so he is just gonna he's just gonna act in a random fashion. I'm gonna roll a d8, and he's just going to attack in that direction. Okay, he's going to just punch. He punches. Punch, yeah, he, he punches the wall, actually. He just slams his fist into the wall. Um, <laughs> That's fair. I understand. Both, like, he's punching the wall. It doesn't do, like, any, like, it, it's doing, like, superficial damage, but you're not seeing it, like, break it down or anything like that. Walls are very strong. Um, Hex, that is going to make it your turn at the top of the round. He is no longer blinded, correct? Uh, well, let's actually see. Uh, he he might not be. Let's see him make that deck save again. Oh, he's not going to make that deck save. <laughs> <laughs> a 15 again. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Blinded as fuck. He do be blinded. All right. Uh, I, yeah, I so think I'm he... going to shoot him. Maybe. Uh... Well, I mean, does Henrietta tell us about the things that won't hurt it? For sure, yes. Okay. As I'm going away, I'm like, this thing is a walking bulwark. You need magic. You need, uh, you cannot charm it. And I, I give you all that info. All right. How far does Adamantine the Christmas... Adamantine even. How far does the Christmas gun squirt uh, water out? How much have you or used Or whatever is in there. Uh, it's been refilled. Maybe with water. With okay. a strange liquid. I'm going to say no. it's got a normal range of 20 feet. Okay. It's piss! It's piss. <laughs> it's piss. I'm going to move. Okay, I'll move here. And then I'm going to shoot him with the, the piss water gun. Yeah, you coat him in the piss water, and for a creature that is literally, uh, yeah, you hit him with that piss water. Uh, for a creature that is literally made out of old body parts sewn together and that have been reanimated with electricity, you somehow manage to make it smell worse. Oh, nice. It takes 14 damage. It takes 14 psychic damage from the piss. Yeah. For <laughs> you made me smell even worse. No. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. It's it's so bad because there's like, it's like someone sprayed like a really cheap air professional with all the flower bouquets in there. So it's like <laughs> a very bad flower smell over piss and rotten flesh. Yeah, he is absolutely drenched in piss water uh, as well as taking that psychic damage. Uh, amazing. Anything more for Hex? Uh, no, that, uh, no, that's all for me. All right, great. That is going to make it Trenzia's turn. Trenzia is going to growl and she's going to say, yeah, well, dodge this. And she is going to shoot a lightning ray, not at any person, but at the copper plated ground underneath your oh. feet, which is going to arc out into every single person in the room. I need everybody to make dexterity saving throws who is touching the ground. Okay. I cannot wow. fly. Oh. Does that it? Oh, like. I guess lightning immunity, so never mind. It doesn't even matter. Oh, it's going to have a special effect on the flesh golem. We'll get there. No. Oh, good. <laughs> Mel beefed it, but also I'm just going to say he beefed it because he threw matcha onto the table. <laughs> I love absolutely that. absolutely whipped her. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that scene. And then it's like, and then yeah, could I like, throw him Brie up too? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, there's this moment where everybody throws their familiars onto tables. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, I think me, I definitely, I got a 23, so I'm going to do a backflip and then kick a latte onto the table, like off my feet. Amazing. Yeah, he leaps off After like all. the soles of your of, of, the, of your shoes, just like majestically through the air. Uh, excellent. 
Uh, so everybody who fails is going to take seven points of damage. Uh, everybody who succeeded is going to take three points of lightning damage. The golem, because he is drenched in piss, is going to take maximized from the 3d6. But instead of doing damage, you see that the lightning, as it like arcs up to the flesh golem, you see the inner lightning that is kind of propelled propulsing the propelling the the this necromantic energy of the golem you see it kind of reinvigorate and the flesh kind of knit back together as this lightning energy Shit. heals the golem <laughs> okay well so much for conserving spell slots all right yeah, better rip into <laughs> this man um and then transia is going to fly 30 feet straight up into the air so nobody can hit her with melee attacks that's going to make it melchia's turn was that on Trinzi as initiative that, that happened? Yes. That wasn't like a lair action? Okay, cool. Well, do y'all have stuff? Mel knows everybody's kits. He would know they have things to hit the golem with, right? I have fire. I I'm probably going to be focusing on the golem. Okay, I can't remember if Gobloidus' sword was magical or not. The rapier is. It's a rapier of warning. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Well, in that case, ma'am, the 30 feet will do you no good. Moonbeam, third <laughs> level. I'm going to get you. <laughs> you are oh, a problem. Damn. You have to leave. <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely. Uh, Trenzy is going to make that. It's con save, right? Yeah, it's a 14 con. Uh, now, the Transia does have magical resistance, so she does have advantage on spells and other magical saving throws. So she's going to take this con save at advantage. Okay. It's only a 12, though, so she fails. All right. Well, get fucked. Um, 12 radiant. 12 radiant damage. She lances down into Terenzia's form, blasting away bits of the skull. You still see like eye sockets and a good portion of the jaw are remaining, but a, a, most of it has been blasted away at this point. Uh, Terenzia is definitely bloodied. Okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep it here on this like little corner area. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me make a little marker for removing. Awesome. All right, great. Anything more for Mel? Uh, no, that's it. Excellent. That is going to make it Gobloidus' turn. Okay, Gobloidus moves a little bit closer to the golem, and he wants to run an inside on him. Sure, um, absolutely. Go in and make an inside check. We'll say this is like, we'll say this is a free action for you. Natural one. Uh, this thing is impossible to incite for you, Gobloidus. It you see pieces of man, women, goblins, uh, all kinds of creatures jumbled together into this thing. It it's it's an amalgam, and it doesn't seem to have any sense of self. Only only orders as as you as you see this thing. Oh, uh, this guy's kind of sad. He's gonna hit him again. <laughs> <laughs> a 10 hits go ahead and roll damage wow 23 points of damage against the uh against the flesh golem too as this magical rapier just cutting through it like uh, it's in a completely different fashion than henrietta's uh blows were this thing cuts through or this rapier cuts through the flesh golem like butter as gobloidus deals 23 points of damage Excellent. Anything more for Godbloodus? Ah, I'm just going to stay here with this guy. <clears throat> Alright, that is going to make it Henrietta's turn. I would like to first get on the table, join my sweet Bree up here, and then I am going to fire a firebolt at the golem. A 17 to hit. Definitely. It's going to roll damage. For four damage. Oh, these damage rolls, you guys. 
Um, so I send that I send that fire damage over to our friend, and then yeah, much like before, as the fire damage lances into it, you see it begin to like just absolutely freak out as the fire scorches and and burns it and as it does so it, it goes even more berserk than before and you see it begin to start frothing at the mouth as it just as it loses control of itself and and starts and just and just goes wild um and i don't have a whole lot i can do right now so i'm just gonna hang out here on this table awesome that is going to make it the Flesh Golem's turn. Uh, the Flesh Golem is... I'm going to say it is going to make a perception check to notice you, Gobloidus. It is going to do so... It would do so at advantage because you just stabbed it, but because it's blinded, it would be at disadvantage, so it's just going to do it at normal. He got a 10, which I'm going to say is good enough. He is going to uh, attack you, Gobloidus. He makes two punch attacks against the little goblin. Uh, at disadvantage, though, because he can't see you. 19 and uh, 20. Oh, the 20 will hit. The 19, I'm going to use a defensive duelist to block. Excellent. Yeah. God bless. You're able to... Um like, just duck out of the way of one of the blows at, like, using the rapier to kind of push it to the side as it slams into the copper plating floor, like, denting it deep. Uh, but you don't see the second fist coming as it just clocks you upside the goblin head and you take 13 points of bludgeoning damage from its brick fist. Ow! No more turns for you! <laughs> Amazing. And that is uh, the flesh column's turn. Uh, that is going to make it Hex. That is your turn. All right. Well, unfortunately, Godboy just stopped his turn in that in the thing. So let's see what happens to him. Uh, three. That could be pretty bad. <laughs> uh, wisdom saves. All right. Uh, I've also just realized that the Flesh Golem, he has, uh, magical resistance, so he should have been having advantage this whole time, but that's fine. Uh, so wisdom save, you say? Yeah. Goblet is you as well. 19. 15. So Are I believe, I believe he fa the Flesh Golem fails. He does. The Flesh Golem, uh, is going to giggle, uh, until the start of my next turn. He is incapacitated, and he must use all his movement to move in a random direction. Amazing. Hey, what's the joke? I want to laugh, too. I'm not sure. He's just laughing. I didn't even say one of my signature jokes yet. And then I'm going to... I am going to look at... Uh... Oh gosh, yeah. I'm gonna look at our our guest, our our host, the 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 skull, and I want to cast Bane. He needs to make charisma save. All right. It also has advantage because it's got magic resistance. Seventeen. Oh okay. Uh, silvery barbs. Okay, he's gonna. <laughs> Just gonna roll again. Seventeen. <laughs> okay. Well, she's all good. Uh, that's it for me. Alrighty, perfect. That is gonna make it Trenzia's turn. Trenzia is going to do her classic. Uh, she's gonna shock the ground again. Everybody make dexterity saving throws. Am I good? Oh, that you're up on the table. You're up on the table. Yes, if you are up on the table, you are good. You do not need to make the save. Uh, I might. Be, I have enough movement. I'll be here just to make it a little more clear. But yes, okay. I. That was something I mentioned was getting up on the table. Oh yeah, sorry, I, I missed that. That's my bad. No uh, worries. Yeah, so three d six damage. Melchio, you take fourteen points of lightning damage. Everybody else, uh, a couple of distant hex, rather, you take seven points of lightning damage. And Ooh. the uh, you see the flesh golem's wounds again knit back together for that fourteen. Uh, 
it's not maximized this time because uh, the piss water burnt off of it when it, with the first discharge. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, and then Trenzia, oh wait, oh I'm sorry, wait a minute. The moonbeam activates immediately on Trenzia's turn, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I was just trying to see if it was at the beginning or at the end of there. It's at the beginning oh, and yeah, at the first it, or time. Yeah. Turn. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's it's going to need to make that concept. Is it at advantage? Yeah. 15? Uh, yeah. Okay, so, so half. Half. Uh, so go ahead and roll that damage. That, you might still be a, might still be enough to kill it. Six. It's not. All right. Tre Trenzia right ta thanks the, thanks the moonbeam as she just darts away from it getting as far away from it as possible still um still just up in the air as she darts to the opposite corner of the room shooting lightning onto the ground as she does so oh she has she's only got 40 feet of movement so she's gonna move as far as she can which is right there all right great that is Trenzia's turn she is floating she's still 30 feet up in the air at this point as well uh Melchior. okay and then if I move it, I can only move it five feet at a time, right? I'm not sure what the distance you can move moving is. Let me check. You can use the action to move the beam 60 feet in any direction. Oh, 60 feet. Oh, girl. Tee Haha. -ha. Guess what? Here it comes. So, yeah. Couldn't fly far enough. Good job. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's a cute trick. So yeah, I'm just gonna center it back in again on her. Amazing. As the beam like like gl goes gliding towards Trendia, she sees it coming. She goes no! as, as it like goes on to her. Um, I think is that that's immediate. That's immediate damage, right? Uh, when a creature enters a spell for the first time on a turn. Yeah, so that's immediate. A turn, that's immediate damage. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, well, the you went into the caves. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Help me, I'm in the dungeon. <laughs> right, the dungeon of the mad mage. We see another little icon and Tim will pop up on the initiative. How did I get here? <laughs> You just hear Alistair in the background. Just, -hee -hee -hee. <laughs> uh, so yeah, go ahead and roll that. Uh, go that. Go ahead and roll that radiant damage one more time for me. That beautiful bean footage. And it's gonna. It's gonna make a con save. Ooh, seventeen. Ooh, uh, describe as the beam just annihilates Trenzia. <gasps> yes. Okay. So uh, it shoots over. Like a, um, it shoots over like a laser, and just as it's closing in on her, it glows white hot. Um, and it almost, <laughs> it almost, it's, it's so it's just like thick with divine radiant energy that it's, it's almost physical as the skull disappears into it and leaves kind of like a skull imprint in the beam. It's how thick it is. Hell yeah. You, as the, as like the, the metal is blasted off of Trenzia's skull and, uh, and she is blown away. You hear her scream out, no, no, I was finally beautiful. And then, and then it's no <laughs> more. No, oh, okay. Not the Sunset Boulevard. Like <laughs> right? <laughs> Incredible. Great turn, Melchior. Is that that's it for you? Uh, yeah. Unless I could use the remaining six feet. M remaining. Hang on. I could. Yeah, you could bounce it over to the to the golem too. All right, he's gonna make the con save. Yeah, get get these fucking. Yeah, he makes the save, so he's gonna take half of the seventeen. So he is going to take eight points. All right. And then that's it. Very nice, very nice. Gobloidus. How you feeling, guy? You a good guy yet? Uh, he's laughing. He's laughing, but he's like... <laughs> uh, you get the sense that he still uh, intends to hurt you. Oh. Whatever. Poke, poke. Yeah, 
20 to hit with the rapier. That'll definitely hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Nice. So 21 points of damage. Perfect. Yeah. 21 points of damage is again. Uh, Godboidus sees his opening and cuts into the flesh golem. Anything more? I told you to tell me a damn joke. And then he'll disengage. Amazing. Oh, you can move further if you'd like. Um, you're still technically within range at this point. You also don't have to disengage. It, uh, it's incapacitated. Oh, yeah. He is incapacitated. Okay. I'll just be here. Amazing. That is going to make it Henrietta's turn. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm going to I'm gonna just pile on this guy and do another fireball. Perfect. Yeah, go ahead and roll the hit. A 15. Hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, much better. That's 13 points of damage. Very nice. Yeah, you see this thing is badly damaged at this point. It, it's it's well past bloodied. It is barely hanging together, especially with the last of the electricity kind of leaving the copper plating. Uh, anything more? Cool. Um, I think, oh, let's see. I'm okay here. I, I think, you know, we've gotten rid of... Um, I keep wanting to call her Terezi, and that's so not her name by any measure. Well, now um, wait a minute. <laughs> but we have gotten rid of the Demi Lich, so I think I'm, I'm still okay seeing if you're on the table, though. Yeah, absolutely. Straight up, disrespectfully, I sit on the table, and I'm just, I'm shooting while I'm firing. That's really good. I love that. <laughs> Amazing. And that'll be my turn. Perfect. All right. That is going to make it the Flesh Golem's turn. So with the, he's incapacitated, right? He has to move in a random direction with all his movement. Okay. He is going to move uh, to the north. He is going to move straight into you, Gobloidus. Uh, Gobloidus, go ahead and make me a dexterity saving throw as the, gob as the Flesh Golem starts just charging past you. It is huge. Oh no, I failed. Critical fail. The flesh golem, as you are like walking through, uh, as he is walking by you, he just fucking backhands you, Godboidus, as as he's walking by. And he's going to roll to hit you. 14 to hit, Godboidus. You missed, dummy. Nice. Yeah, the the big fist comes up and you manage to just bring your rapier up in time to deflect it away as it just charges through you and ends up, bam, blam, blasting and blashing into the wall. Uh, that's the flesh golem's turn. Hex. Okay. Uh, let's just try to. How's the hex? How's the uh, golem look? Super badly damaged. All right, I'm gonna just shoot him with a crossbow bolt. And do some more psychic damage to him. Absolutely. Go ahead and roll the hit. 23 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Go ahead, and, psychic damage. Go ahead and describe your kill, Hex. I, uh, why haven't we just been shooting it? And I shoot it, and I act like I did nothing else to it but shoot it so that it just falls over and dies <laughs> from, the, from the, the simple crossbow bolt. That everyone knows is it magic. The crossbow bolt right. lances into the flesh golem's chest. Uh, you see it look down, like kind of confused at it. It looks up and then its head fucking explodes. <laughs> look at that. That was its weakness the whole time. His exploding head was his weakness. Uh, the crossbow bolt. Hmm, for sure. <laughs> no one tried shooting at it. Amazing. Y'all are out of combat as the as the battle rage kind of kind of subsides and y'all y'all are safe once more in this small laboratory. Um this is about time when I would say we would take a break, but we've only got forty five minutes left in the session. Are we good to keep playing or would y'all would do you want to take like a five minute break? 
I'm okay with keep them going. Yeah, I'm good. I'm okay to keep going. Timbo. Yeah. I'm feeling inspired by the nasty thing I've already done to the Nothic. Can I take the this uh, Skull's gem eyes? Um, as you move forward and begin to look at Trantia, uh, the, the skull that remains there, uh, you see that there is not actually gem eyes. Um, it looks like it was just plated in metal, which has now been blasted away off of it. Um, oh. But it's not... Um, it's, it doesn't appear to have had those uh, those gem eyes that you thought uh, were placed there. Oh, interesting. Cool. Go ahead and make me another Arcana check. Um, if... Um, if, if anybody would like to help, you can do this at advantage. Or I guess you've got the familiar, so do it at advantage. Yeah. How would you ever not be at advantage? That's a the entire point 20. of the familiar. Nat 20? Uh, <laughs> you get the sense that this is not a naturally occurring creature, obviously. Uh, it's some kind of necromantic creature, uh, that has been perverted even further. Um, with the Nat 20 Arcana chink, you realize a couple of things. One, this is a tweaked uh, version of a flame skull, where instead of it being this fiery entity, it is uh, it is a lightning based one, and it and it is gener- it generates lightning energy, and is and and flame skulls normally have like fireball, for example. Sure. Um, I will also say with the nat twenty arcana check, you know flame skulls regenerate after an hour. Like fully regenerate? Yeah, if you don't destroy the skull, they will fully regenerate after an hour. I mean, yeah, I'll fucking... I throw it up and I'll cast a gem's magic missile at it. I'll say I'll say because you rolled that nat 20 before you before you use the spell slot, you know that it can uh it can only if you sprinkle holy water on it or you cast the spell magic on it or remove curse, that will that will turn it off. But anything else it will come back. Oh, lovely. Is um would holy milk do the job? Yes. <laughs> you think <laughs> you think with that nat 20, a holy ordained fluid of any format would would do the job. Cool. I'm going to just kind of hacky sack it into the moonbeam. Is that holy enough? Well, we need holy water or milk. We need the actual substance. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. No, then I'll, I'll, I'll get Mel's attention and I'll kind of update him on the situation. Yeah, then Mel will just... Um... Ooh, we didn't establish how much was in Macha's... Um, we didn't establish how much... I, I want to say keg, but keg is way too big. We didn't oh, like the little... Emergency the... barrel. Yeah. A growler. Yeah. barrel. <laughs> <laughs> yes the like uh, saint bernard barrels yeah yeah so we didn't establish how much was in there um, i would say it could hold at least two potions worth that seems about right okay well then yeah mel will just kind of bring matcha over to the skull and just kind of like you know dribble a little bit on there to obliterate it yeah as you do so uh a, a ghost just rips out of it and as it is freed from its mortal bonds and you see fucking like ghastly chains come up and just fucking pull its ass into the underworld and the skull turns to ash um Good. and cool. and you all hear Halister in your voice in your in your heads go i never cared for that one anyways too needy always bothering me uh 10 points for everyone oh nice okay can I request a point total? Silence. Oh, of course Do. it is. Um, also- total, total 1,000 for everybody. <laughs> I, I can do math. I think you're right, Gobloidus. I think you've done the right math there. That, does, that sounds about right. Um, also with the alchemy jug, can we, can we get another potion? Oh, you don't want the yeah. mayonnaise? Mayonnaise? No. Oil? No. <laughs> but the mayonnaise. Mel's just told. Do you. Okay. If you want mayonnaise. Okay, you know what? If you want mayonnaise, then I will just heal myself. And Galboidus, you're looking a little. You're looking a, a little rough. Do you want to. You want mayonnaise? Uh, what? Uh, what? Eh. 
I need healing. He's holding, yeah, he's holding. <laughs> Mel is just kind of giving the mom stare and holding out the jaw. Okay, you want, oh, so you want healing. Okay, we can do that. I'm going to give <laughs> Coplius the jar after getting potions from it. I mean, we could do both. Once you pick it, it's it's set for 24 hours, though. Yeah. Oh, is it not three different times a day? Mm -mm. No, it's well, one. I believe it's yeah. once. Once a day, you can pour one of the amount of thing from it. Yeah. yeah. And each and each amount is a different amount, depending on what thing you pick. It's a needlessly complicated <laughs> item. You see how to throw okay. that out there. <laughs> yeah, and as you know, while you're all hanging out in here... Um, uh, go ahead and make me just like investigation or perception checks all as y'all are kind of I assume looting the room. Yeah. Am I healed? Yeah, God boy, just go ahead and roll uh 2d4 plus four for that potion you drink. Delicious. Twenty-one. Oh yes, Mel is going to look around. Seventeen. Twenty-four perception. Nice. Um, let me see. As well, are looking around. I'm gonna say, so D four. Y'all find Melchior and Henrietta. You each find a uh, uh, a potion, kind of tucked away, a healing potion. It seems like uh, tucked away in like a in in different drawers, hanging out in different in different spaces. Oh, cheers. Um, I would also say with the 21, uh, Henrietta, you find a note um, written in a feminine handwriting. Um, and it says, day 64, I no longer trust the other apprentices. What they see as mysticism, I know to be science. I can't stand their incantations and their mutterings any longer. If any of them try to intrude on my laboratory again, they're in for a truly shocking surprise. Oh, so she's got jokes. Um, and I'll show the note to everyone. Or I should I say, had jokes. Um, interesting. So there are more. We may very well run into more of these Certainly. rooms. Yeah, would I be able to like kind of peek out a door? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and as well, sorry, Gobloidus. Um, real quick, as you're looking around, I'll say something that catches your eye. You see that in like a test tray, um, like kind of set set away from the rest of the the rest of the group. You see that there is a uh, a piece of like troll flesh that has been like seemingly harvested and is like being experimented on and you see it is like it's kind of like resting in like a shallow pan of acid and it is constantly like melting and regrowing in this in this pan Ew. oh fascinating i'll take it how basic couple of just gets troll flesh all right great um <laughs> <laughs> So you peek out this door, Gobloid, or uh, out this door, Henrietta? Mm-hmm. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, as you peek out the door, you see that it leads into what appears to be a storage room. There is seemingly a, um, like, you see that there are barrels kind of tucked up against walls. There is a hammock, uh, like that has been strung up in the corner up to the top right um and it's just it kind of looks like a, a little dingy storage room it's dark past out there though um would you be able to reveal the room yeah absolutely i wasn't sure if it was just my browser so i went and refreshed it real quick okay um, and I'll call back. Uh, this room looks mostly clear. Um, how old did that letter look? Make me an insight check, uh, Hex. Okay. Fifteen. 
13. It looks pretty new. Like it doesn't look it doesn't look that old. Um, the 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 ink is like maybe a little bit faded, but like it doesn't look it doesn't look like hundreds of years old or anything like that. It it looks it looks fairly recent, like that it could have been written in maybe the past year or so, maybe. Okay. Okay. So any experiments they may work on could still be kind of roaming around and fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to look around this room. Got to see what all is in this little storage area. Yeah. So y'all are moving into this room. Uh, feel free to place yourself in whatever location it makes sense for you to be in this room. It also, you see that it ex exits further out into this corridor out here. And it, it opens even further up here, as well as leading south into another quarter. And there's another little hole that leads. Um, Mel Kelly, do you open one of the barrels? Uh, yeah. Everybody roll for initiative as, as you open the barrel, God damn it. <laughs> bursting forth is a fucking zombie inside of it. Oh my God, of course. <laughs> nice. I love it. Well, actually, before everybody rolls initiative, I does it. Melchior, do you have um, channel divinity? Yes, I do. I think you could just wreck these guys in one. In, 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 if you do that, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna bother everybody <laughs> rolling for initiative if you're just gonna be like channel divinity. Everybody's dead. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> get out of here. Turn <laughs> the undead. Turn undead immediately. <laughs> I'm just going to say, so you turn on dead as soon as this ghoul pops up out at you. Um, kind of like, y'all are still kind of on edge as this, uh, after this like encounter with Trenzia, and you see these ghouls just begin to go running. There's about, uh, I think about a dozen of them, or half a dozen of them in this room hiding in various barrels. And they all just like, as you uh, hold forth your holy sign glowing with its milky energy, they all just immediately freak out and run away. Mel, that was incredible. I'm Mel also looks rather beat up, but doesn't want to use this. I'm I'm just sick of it. I'm just No, that's fair. I totally get that. Why would you keep this in storage? Why would that doesn't make any <laughs> flabbergasted. It does seem kinda like oh, I don't know. It there is something odd about like they are rotting bodies, so it's a little gross. And why would you keep them in like a perfectly good barrel? Mm-hmm. He's just irritated. Just <laughs> he's more he's annoyed. <laughs> That's True. the right word. Um convinced out of looking for anything else in this room, just like just over it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you look through the barrels. There does not appear to be shit all in them. It appears like they were literally just rolling these these zombies. A waste. An absolute waste. A waste of perfectly good barrels. He's irritated. <laughs> you know how much grain you could store in these? Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. Or milk. Actually... <laughs> or milk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's actually yogurt process there are there actually are some if you go through the process of opening all the barrels um you see that three of them have fist-sized chunks of copper ore oh I don't know if you want any of that but it's there for you if oh, you do yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah 100 percent yeah, they're big chunks. They, there's like, um, they're kind of, it seems like maybe this has been, these are like the bottom scraps. Like uh, this kind of answers the question of where did this copper or, or for the copper plating of the floor come oh from to God. you? Um, there, so there's only like a few of these scraps left over, uh, but there's about three. They're big chunks. You might feel, you feel like you might get, be able to get a little bit of gold off them. Okay. And you said there's like three, three little Chunky chunks? Yeah, three chunks of copper, each worth 50 gold. Okay. Nice. All right. Uh, let's see what else is here. 
He's also just a little embarrassed because he keeps telling people not to touch anything, and then he touched a thing and immediately it went. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to bring it up. Anyways, uh, swiftly moving on, uh, let's go to the next room. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, y'all continue down. You see that the corridor extends uh, both to the south and to the north. Um, and uh, do y'all continue north? Um, uh, should we? I think mm, just kind of like knowings or general. We might be heading back towards Goblin Town. Do we want to sort of complete the loop just to do it? Goblin Town. I love it there. I did love yeah. Goblin Town. Do we hear any noises coming from either direction? Like the sounds of shuffling yeah. and whatnot? Or... Sure, go ahead and make me perception checks. Oh, sneaky. 14. 14. Um, I'm going to say uh, from the north, you hear the occasional, oh, with the 21. Henrietta, you hear the occasional um, zap, zap of like similar kind of like electrical devices uh, coming, like emanating from the north uh, section. Uh, from the south, you hear silence. Um, I'll be so honest. I think to the north, there might be more, maybe another golem, maybe something else. I don't know. There's for sure noise that's coming from that way. <laughs> well, I'm lost. And what do we see whenever we kind of like peek down this northern passageway? Yeah. You peek down the northern passageway, you see that it opens into another room that also looks a lot like a workshop. Though this one, if the last one was like a wizard's workshop, this is more, less, you know, maybe workshop is the wrong word and this is more morgue. Interesting. Mm -hmm. There are like tables that clearly have like, uh, rivulets built into them in order to uh, have blood and exsanguination flow off of them and for easy cleanup uh you even see there are like some chunks of indescribable flesh that are kind of just have been left there uh to rot seemingly can i check out this desk yeah absolutely going to make me an investigation check guidance oh nice yeah go to make that investigation oh, check with yeah. an additional d4 A dirty 20. Dirty 20 is pretty damn good. You're searching through the desk. You find that um, you find that there is very little in it, but that that this feels odd to you, uh, Henrietta. So you go back through the drawers one more time, and you find that there is actually a like a hidden false bottom in one of the drawers. And as you lift it up, you find that there is another scrawled note on there in the same feminine handwriting. It says, day one. Hallister has granted me this. Uh, Hallister has granted this me this abandoned <laughs> copper mine in the arcane chambers. Finally, I have access to the components needed for my experiments. Mm -hmm. You hear Intrenzia's voice for some reason. For sure. <laughs> Dear diary. I just kind of imagine that's what it would sound like if it was her reading it. You know, <laughs> and I'm. <laughs> um. Are there anything that's on the tables? I know you said it's kind of a morgue. Are there like dead bodies? There are a couple of pieces of dead bodies, but there is no full, full, like flesh. Like there's no full, mm. full person. Uh, you do see that there are like a couple of funny looking, like uh, metallic contraptions that have arced up from like the opposite ends of the table. And that's where like you're seeing occasional sparks of energy, like zap between. Okay. Hmm. Well, um, I suppose onwards. Yeah. Oh, is there a door right here? Yeah, there sure is. As you crack into that door, it is unlocked and it opens into uh, a corridor showing quite a distance because y'all can see super duper far. It goes <laughs> quite far all the way to this wall over on the opposite side and you see that there are multiple outs along this this path and you also see like i think at this point everybody make perception checks uh 
Nat 20. Ooh, lovely. Nat 20, 23, 9, and 18. Um, with a Nat 20, you, Henrietta, um, I'm not sure what oral, f like, obviously you need, like, some level of, I assume, like, uh, she has some level of oral factory sensors, even if it's, it's just for like the uh, yeah the enjoyment of food or something like that. Like mm -hmm. you smell like the most delicious food, like emanating uh, emanating down from this uh, from this chamber out here. And I think it's good enough that everybody can smell can smell it. It, it smells incredible. Um, almost uh, Henrietta with the nat twenty, almost too good to be true. As it is, it is it is just wafting through this especially after the the smell of rot it is just a, a welcome respite as the um as as you are as you encounter this um now i've been looking for a new chef for of course the tavern and um it's very difficult to find them and i have to say i am suspicious that i might be able to find one in the dungeon do you know what i'm saying like a little odd. That is that lizard on a stick? I want it. It could very well be a trap, of course. <laughs> Some scorpion hot pot. <laughs> I'll also say because... why I thought you were about to say hot pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, Henrietta. Oh, sorry, Melchior and Goblotus as well, I, and, and and Henrietta too. You can also see like there, the smell definitely seems to be emanating from this, and you can see movement coming from there. Um, not of a humanoid nature. It def it seems like it looks like like things are kind of floating, kind of agnostically through the air by themselves. Hmm, spooky. Hmm. Let's move with an air of caution. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like Y'all start to sneak. Go ahead and roll stealth checks. Melchiel, as you make your way here, you see that uh -oh. this... <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> you see that it opens up into a large area. Um, the Ooh. center of which there is what seems to be a well, or, or sorry, not a well, a pump and a stone basin. At the pump, you see... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, water trickles from a faucet, breaking what would otherwise be silence as it drips into a vast stone basin. Its hand pump is crusty with rust and slumped over the basin's lid is a goblin's corpse. A bucket lies nearby, its water spilled. So it's poisoned. Well, the, the goblin is like, his one of his hands is on the pump and the other hand, he's like in the water. Like he was trying oh, he to get was out? Drowned. It oh. does kind of look like that, yeah. <sighs> yeah, he was drowned in there. Cool. How fresh this is corpse. this is a little bit of a house of horrors sort of level, huh? He looks he fairly fresh. Oh. Y'all want to talk to him? Yeah, I was about to give some rights to this goblin brother, but yeah, bring him back. All right, bring me that. Give me the body. I'll stay back here. Does it still have the? Does it still have a mouth and tongue? Yeah. Uh, as you pull its head up out of the basin, it the the pop up of it appears to be quite waterlogged. Its its flesh has kind of, like you know that thing that corpses do where they get so filled with water and saturated that the flesh kind of bulges out. Uh, yeah. He's, yeah. So he's, he's kind of like that. He's like definitely started rotting a little bit. Um. But he's yeah he's intact. Okay. Yeah. I'll cast speak with dead with autumn. What do you want interrupting my ever rest? Oh, hi. I was just wondering, how'd you die? I was drowned. Duh. Ah, uh, who killed you? <laughs> I didn't see it. Came from behind while I was getting the bucket. 
Or yeah, anyone else? Well, I was question? filling the bucket. Um. Uh, are you with uh, Xanathar? Um, the goblin corpse attempts to spit a as a response to that. Oh. Goblin town for life and death. Yeah, <laughs> brother. I feel it. Oh, he's dead again. Well. You have two more questions. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, um. We could ask what are in the surrounding rooms. True. Or if it knows how to get back to Goblin Town. Well, I mean, do we do we need a way back to Goblin Town? Well, uh, you know, it it is at least a safe haven if we want to rest again in the near future. I meant one that, like, can't we just kind of walk back? We I mean, sure, we could backtrack all the way there. Uh, do you know what's in the surrounding rooms? No, I drew the short straw because everyone in Goblin Town was scared of getting into the water. Guess I know why now. Oh, he was mm. just getting well. All right. All right, what's the fastest way back to Goblin Town, do you know? Literally just go north and then right, and you're literally right there. Oh. Is, oh. There, a, is there a door there? No, there's no door oh, there. He's, if he's if he would, yeah, he nods kind of in the general uh, direction, and he, he, he nods this way. Huh. Um, Gobloidus, do you still have that wand? Yeah, Secrets? you mean my secret one? Yeah. Yeah? You want me to use it here? Well, it uh might be able to figure out how to open whatever the wall is to get back to Goblin Town. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. It, this might not be just. This just might not be clear through narration. If oh, I, yeah, when I asked if there wasn't a door. You meant no. It's just an open hallway. Yes, yeah, sorry. When when you said no, I was like, oh, it's just like a wall. <laughs> I was I misunderstood. Okay, okay, okay. I'm here. No, you're all good. That was not clear on my part. Yes, this is. Uh, there is an opening here, um, and you can like with your with your passive perceptions, you can hear the clamor coming from echoing down the hall of Gotham oh. Town. Lovely. It's this way, unless you want to look around more. Yeah. I mean, do we want to go to Goblin Town now, or do we want to keep moving forward and mark this as uh, the way back? Well, I'm I'm okay to keep going. I know that we've had quite a few interesting encounters today, but um, I'm okay to go a little bit longer. Yeah, all right. Let's keep going. Try to find where that food is coming from, or the food smell, rather. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Y'all continue going down the corridor to the left. Um, you can definitely see that there are implements flying through the air. Um, it, it's like uh, as you're kind of like walking from this area over here, implements like knives and spoons and bowls are uh, are kind of moving and flying through the air and are kind of like cooking and using themselves and preparing a feast as as y'all kind of uh, as y'all progress and get closer you that, that becomes much more easy to see you also see that to the north here um is another seemingly um uh, magical laboratory as you're kind of looking around interesting um but this this room is dusty and uh and looking unused uh, for a while, like Transia's lab had signs of life and experimentation going on in it. In it, this is mm -hmm. dull and dead, and seems to have been unused for quite a while. Hmm. Awesome. I'm gonna look around. Yeah. That's a gentle rifling. Yeah. Everybody, go ahead and make investigation or perception checks as y'all give it a look see. Give it the old one too. 
Oh, let me go ahead and read the, the box text for y'all as well. Wow, Melk crit. Holy shit. This chamber, clearly an alchemical laboratory, is chalked with dust. Grimy vials and alembics sit unused on rusted iron tables. Ingredients have rotted on the shelves and in their bottles. Can nothing be salvaged? Melkiel, you are, you, you know, you, you feel like in your pocket that coin glow warm as you're looking around and you, you just kind of almost like playing hot cold with it. You follow it to a small crate, which you just easily open, um, finding it, opening it, you find three potions of healing and a bottle of pink fluid in a heart shaped bottle. For those wondering, an Olympic is like a distiller. It's one of those things where you have like a, a, a thingy and it heats it up and it steam and then it condenses down through a tube. I just looked it up because I had no idea what it was. But there you go. I was picturing like an old style centrifuge, so I'm glad you did so. <laughs> yeah. So there's rotten food on the table. There are rotten ingredients on the table. Um, what might be deemed food by God Lotus, I'm not one to judge. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, God Lotus will look at uh, the items on the table to see if he likes any. He likes it. It's rotten as hell. He loves it. He's going to eat it. <laughs> and Mel also wants to try and see what this heart shaped. Fluid. Sure. Okay. Go in and make me. I'll say go in and make me an Arcana check at advantage because you crit on that perception check. Ooh. Oh well. Okay. What the fuck? It's, uh, they crit again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Crits Man. for everyone. I, I gotta. I gotta just give it to you. It is a filter of love. Ooh. Oh. You find a love potion. Oh. Cute. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's tucking that away. He's tucking that away. Amazing. <laughs> Do you tell anybody else about the... No. Uh, no, okay, Melkiel just... In fact, go ahead and make Ooh. me a sleight of hand check as you do so, Melkiel. <laughs> well, I'll say you have advantage on this roll because you've rolled two crits back to back. <laughs> My passive perception is a 14. Oh, shit. I'm going to say because everybody was everybody was looking about, uh, if, unless you have a 19 passive perception, Melkale takes the what bottle. What about... I did do a perception check for a 20. I, you were looking for other stuff, so I'm going to say okay, this is this enough. was be explicitly for him hiding the bottle. Um, but that, Sneaky. But that seems to be about it. Joaquin seems to have guided you to, to these bottles. Joaquin knows what he's about. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dog. Have a, have a potion of love on me. Oh, oh damn, thanks. <laughs> Yo, this might help. Here you go. Um, <laughs> man, what a, what a great person to find that filter of love to. How topical. All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but that's about what you find in this in this abandoned laboratory. Um, the smell of food wafting has just become stronger and stronger. I've eaten some. So are we in the room where currently all the pots and pans are flying around? No, that is happening uh, over in this direction. That's happening in this room. Mm -hmm. And all that food in there looks fresh. Ooh. Interesting. What does yeah. it look like? Yeah, y'all come into the room. Uh, you're looking around. Then you see there are like pans and pots clattering around. There's, uh, you know, uh, water boiling on a stove. You see, um, uh, and you see like it's all in preparing this kind of like almost like classic Thanksgiving style meal that is kind of being arranged on uh, on this kind of side table up here. Um, and it looks delicious. There's like a turkey and a roast roast ham. There's like stuffing, gravy, you know, there's all kinds of, everything that you could possibly want. Classic fixins. This is the most obvious trap I've seen in my entire life. Can I just say? I know. Is that rude? No, it's, it's what we need to hear. It is. Uh, 
I don't even think I have food, food, food. My spell slots. Ugh. So as as <laughs> as Henrietta and Mel are are discussing how obvious of a trap this is, what are Hexa and Gubloidus doing? I think we're 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 definitely <laughs> fist feet fist deep in this food. Um, I would like yeah. to prepare a firebolt. Okay. Is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> hex, hex, or sorry, Henrietta generates a, a magical energy in her in her hands. Malkiel. Oh my god. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna prepare an action. What like, action? Just prepare. A sp- Ugh. Um. <laughs> God, it's going to be my last, my absolutely last spell slot. Oh, sorry. Which which spell was it? <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh, no, you're good. Uh, God, it's probably going to be my last moonbeam. No healing for anybody. Myself included. All right, yeah, you get the moonbeam ready. Uh, Gobloidus and Hex, you sit down and just begin to eat fistfuls, fistful after fistful of of food at the table. Uh, Gobloidus, it tastes uh, great to you. It tastes tastes absolutely normal and how you would have expected delicious food like this to taste. Woo! I love it. (laughs) Hex, I'm going to need you to make a constitution saving throw because you are not used to eating rotting food. But yeah. I am, though. I also live in the garbage. Oh, wait. Yeah, you are. Okay, never <laughs> mind. <God Lydus. laughs> you, you, you and God Lydus stuck in, and you get you start eating, and, and it's just mouthfuls of rotten food. It tastes delicious. You're having a great time. Uh, we love the trash. This is the best. Woo! <laughs> when at the head of the table, uh, you're going to see, like, a pot kind of raise up, and it's going to fall off and clatter to the floor, and underneath uh, underneath it, it's going to unveil a ghostly figure, and the figure is going to say, you didn't say grace, and go to attack oh. you. <laughs> and, uh, Can I fire off my fireball? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And as this happens, the illusion drops from the kitchen, and you see that there's it's rotted food everywhere. The the but the the flying animated uh like materials like the uh, the knives and the spoons and stuff they all still remain animated and start to move to attack you. Uh, you ev- didn't say grace. <laughs> Everybody, go ahead and no. roll for initiative. Um, and in fact, I think that is going to be the perfect place to call the session. <laughs> Do it a dimension twenty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah, so everybody go to roll initiative we'll pick up next oh, session with okay. this with this big old big old combat um thank you so much everybody for being here thank you to all the lurkers uh all the lurkers chatters everybody for hanging out thank you again to uh nova rosa domino for the resubscription uh mish for the resubscription wero for the resubscription uh polly has a cracker for the follow that happened offline and tenebris wolfrey uh for the follower oh and tenebris wolfrey for the follow as well thank you so much uh we're going to be live in two weeks with the next episode of dungeon of the mad mage uh on next Sunday, we've got the next episode of Tales of the Rhine Nexus, Fateful Bounties. The party has more or less uh, finished up the uh, the adventure at the satellite and are going to be cleaning up uh, whatever remains there before having a little bit of downtime. Who knows what might happen? Um, we've also got on Wednesday, 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 7 p.m. AST, that level 20 battle royale. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Uh, but before we go, I want to let my lovely cast uh, tell you where you can find them. Uh, Werewolf, why don't you start us? Hello, hello, hello. My name is Roro Bief, and tonight I played Edda Alumax. Um, I can be found um, on Twitter and Twitch as Werewolf BF, on Blue Sky as Werewolf.BlueSky. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and um, over the next month, I have a bunch of different AP um, appearances I'm going to be doing. Um, and I'll, there'll be details in Timbo's server and the self promo channels, but I'm going to be in a Barbie themed um, Bluebeard's Bride game called Barbie's Nightmare House. Um, I am going to be doing um, my first episode of Blood Island um, and 
the other thing I'm doing is just actually going to be recording for a podcast, so that'll be coming out eventually. But uh, I'll keep you guys all updated. So hop in Timbo's channel or in Discord, and I'll have info in there. I'm so excited for all of those things. <laughs> yeah, uh, next, we have Mish. All righty, I am Mishroom Soup. Uh, we're still struggle busting with the internet, so for now, you're just going to be able to find me here. But I'm hoping that whenever I do get live again, I can get some nice, awesome projects. I'm Fuel filled with creative energy, but zero outlet, so it's all going to explode eventually one day. Perfect, and I can. <laughs> and we we lie in wait, We're just waiting for the explosion, for the eruption. The <laughs> Excellent. Next, we have the sesh. Hello, I am the sesh. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the sesh thirteen and the sesh cast on everything else. Uh, I played Hex Starchild, who uh, after settling in Geneva is facing a new revelation and must be primed for an arranged marriage. So we'll see how he does with that. In Princess Diaries 2, uh, Electric Boogaloo, <laughs> I guess. What, what's the name of the second one? Anyways. A royal engagement. Of course. You know, let people know what they're going to see at the movie theater. Just completely. Perfect. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. And last but certainly not least, we have Gold Moon. Hi, I'm Gold Moon, and I played Gobloidus. You can find me here every two weeks on Mad Mage on Timbo's channel. Beautiful. Again, thank you so much, everybody, for being out here. I super appreciate it. Um, and thank you again for all the support that all goes to funding the magic and making us come from the internet space into your eyes and ears and potentially your brain. Uh, thank you again, everybody. We're going to go ahead and raid over into Dice Legends, who are just a really cool group. Uh, actually, New Zealand streamers uh, who do Dungeons & Dragons and tabletop stuff. Real cool group of people. Uh, but yeah, thank you again so much, everybody. We're going to be live again with that level uh, 20 Battle Royale one-shot on uh, this Wednesday, 7 p.m. EST. Hope to see you there. But until next time, stay magical. All right, bye, everybody. Bye. 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 bye.